everybody. Welcome to the FN Studios. I'm John Ramdean. He's Robin Black. No UFC this weekend, but there is Bellator on Friday, World Series of Fighting on Saturday. And on Saturday, Robin and I are going to call Fight for Pride 3 in Laval, Quebec. Uh, one of the, I guess, the biiggest prospects coming out of Canada right now, Yanni Sherbadov. 125-pound uh, fighter looking for his third victory in a row. Is this guy the real deal? So far, he is the real deal. He goes out to Greg Jackson's. They have a lot of good 125ers and gets that level of sparring partner. And he has looked really, really good. The, the shape he's in, you know, the physical makeup of the kid is really impressive. The way he moves, you know, moves like a very evolved athlete. He comes from genetically good yeah. st stock. All you got to do is take a look at his dad and his older brother, Boris. His mom was an Olympic uh, skating coach. He, she was an Olympian as well, yeah. I believe. And now she coaches yeah. uh, professional athletes in skating. Exactly. So you, you start with some pretty good genetic material, and he's, you know, they're having a hard time finding fights for him, like you do with a lot of good uh, up-and-comers, and, -comers. and uh, it's a risk when you go and face him. So they're bringing a guy in from France with, you know, 13, 14 yeah, yeah. fights for this 2-0 kid to face. So it's going to be a great fight, and uh, they put on great cards. You know, grassroots MMA is a really special thing. If you haven't got a chance to go out, and you're watching us in Canada, there's four or five good promotions in Edmonton, Winnipeg will put on shows. You know, right across the country, you can see good ones. If you're in Laval this weekend, come out and say hi. And I'll tell you why, uh, because there's so many fighters uh, across this country, and you go KSW in Poland, uh, uh, EFC Africa. There's so many great fighters around the world that a guy like Shane Campbell or Ryan Ford, these guys are on the cusp of getting to the big show. And I believe Yanni Sherbatov, too, especially at 125 pounds. The UFC trying to open up that division, and they're r quickly running out of challengers for Demetrius Johnson. And one of the reasons that I've been impressed with Yanni Sherbatov, we, we went out with the promoters, yep. uh, Boris, his older brother, yep. and Andy. Yanni didn't come. No. His goal was to stay at home, focus on his family, yeah. and focus on fighting. He could be out partying, but yeah. he has a task at hand, and that is to get himself to the highest level. If you're a really good athlete and you've got great training partners, you've got access to good coaching, and it's 2009, you can go out and party and train, and there's not that many good guys. You're better than them. You're mentally stronger. Now you want to achieve something. You've got to uh, train like a real athlete. You've got to be driven like a real athlete, and this kid's one of those. Eamon Zahabi yeah, yeah. out in, in uh, Montreal. He's uh, at 135. He's getting up into the 4 and 5 in row range. Uh, I think... For, um, for Sherbatov, I think he needs to perform well in this fight, and he needs to have one more good performance. Mm -hmm. I think at 4-0, at 125, if you're looking dominant, you got a real shot to move it up to the UFC. And one or two wins in the UFC, you're in the top 10 right away. Three wins yeah. in there, you're looking for the top. And that shows you another smart thing about the Sherbatovs, is Boris and, and uh, Yanni both looked at it, and they said, one of us needs to run the business, and what, two great athletes. One of us needs to run the business and manage it. One of us needs to be the athlete. You know, you're the 125er. This is the best road yeah, yeah. to victory if we concentrate on you. Uh, Stranya Gavrilovic in the co-main event. Exciting uh, kid. If you guys like watching guys, athletes that can take punishment, that will never give up and try to find a way to win the fight, this is the guy for you. I think 5-0 and oh right now, yeah. or 6-0. and oh, uh, Managed by Stefan Patry, who famously managed yeah. George St. Pierre, who uh, helped uh, organize the UCC TKO organization, one of the biggest and best mixed martial arts promotions in the history of MMA, a pioneering organization here in Canada. Uh, this guy, very, very entertaining to watch. Yeah, in his last fight, again, they brought a guy way more experienced than him, super talent, really good looking yeah. fighter from uh, France again, and he came over and, um, and Stranya had better ways to win the fight than the way he won it. He had ways of moving and ways to create better angles and ways to counter against a better fighter. And he thought instead, I'm Toughness. tougher than you and I'm more driven than you. And Matt Brown style, yeah. I'll meet you in the middle until you take a step back and then I'll have one. It's a very dangerous way to fight, but it's a very exciting way for an audience. I'd love to see him, if he wants to step outside, go to Europe and fight in KSW one or two times. That is where yeah. the exciting fights are happening right now outside of the UFC. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons why it's important to tune in, to go see these local fights. Gavrilovic fought an instinct MMA. Brandon Thatch also fought yeah. an instinct MMA. So fans could, could see these guys get ready for the leap to the big show. You look at the MFC out of Edmonton. Ben Henderson fought yeah. there. Former UFC lightweight champion. Uh, Steve Bosse was another guy that uh, looked good on the Canadian yeah. MMA scene. Got that contract with the UFC. But I guess there was too many injuries. Breakdowns in yeah. his body. That's sometimes the scary thing. 
You know, I often will complain now. We saw a week ago uh, on the UFC, there was a one and all guy from Central America. And I understand that the Latin America, tough Latin America is about expanding the brand. And if the young guy's on there and he's only one and all, we, that for the purpose of growing the sport, you have to have him fight. But a one and all fighter in the UFC is a crazy yeah, thing to me, it you is know? Too. But the upside to that is if these guys get good enough that a Yanni at 3-0 and or an Eamon at 5-0 and or some of these young guys can fight, maybe their bodies take less damage than the Steve Bosses did. Maybe they're able to make that move to where they're getting paid and, and getting exposure before their bodies Fair break enough. down. So. But shouldn't they get the experience outside of the UFC? Shouldn't they, uh, like Eamon's a hobby, get to a 5-0, and 6-0, and 8-0, 10-0, before making the leap over to the world's biggest mixed martial arts promotion. Instead, you're thrown into the deep waters not knowing if you have the abilities to hang with guys that are supposed to be the top of the food chain. Yeah, I, I still believe, I still want to believe as a fan that the UFC is where the best fighters fight. Which they that, are. Which they are. Most of Most the best of fighters fight there. But when I see 0-0 and 1-0 and and guys fight there, yeah. you know, you have to go and go through these promotions and also it's good for the sport at the grassroots yeah. level. I was so... I, I disliked hearing that a famous professional wrestler, CM Punk, was going to fight in the UFC. But now it really doesn't bother yeah. me because it's already happening. True, but We already the, have it happen. I, I agree, but at the same time, uh, Lance Palmer isn't fighting in the UFC. Rick Glenn isn't fighting in the UFC. Marlon Moraes isn't yeah. fighting in the UFC. Josh Hill isn't fighting in the UFC. And I look at those guys, they can compete with a lot of the fighters currently yeah. ranked in the top yeah. 15 or top 20. In, in their respective divisions. For sure. And uh, that's where some of the flaws lie. And that's why these promotions are really, really, really important, is where the, the next fighters, the fighters that yeah. are not only going to be the next generation of UFC fighters, but the guys on the front end of pioneering new ideas and new techniques yeah. and building the show, those guys have to fight somewhere. So like I said, if you're in Laval, Quebec, not only come out and check out Fight for Pride, but come say hi to me and John. Uh, we drink uh, Mexican beer, we drink <laughs> Canadian beer, whatever. You want to buy us. That's it for us. Don't go anywhere. Hopefully, we'll see you in Laval this weekend. More Fight News Now Extra is still coming at you.